So here's a question. I mean, do you actually, do you think that either of us could have achieved all the things that we have in climbing and sort of become professional climbers with the same, you know, risk evaluation process that we have now, uh, you know, when we were younger? Like, basically, I mean, <clears throat> sorry, I don't really know the best way to frame the question, but, you know, it's it's almost cliche that, that as we get older, our risk-making process changes our tolerance maybe goes down a little bit like basically we just start to evaluate things a little bit better but that's always easy as we get older to be like oh well that's too dangerous you shouldn't do that but then you know there's always the young guy who's just like f it and goes out and does incredible things and i mean you know i think for me i saw that with somebody like mark Andre leclerc where it's like he's doing things that i couldn't even imagine being done and you're like that's is a totally different level and it's not even that he was like trying to be sketchy or thought that he was being sketchy. I mean, like who knows about his whole process, but basically he was out following his own dream and like having adventures in the mountains. And, you know, so I guess my question is, is it, is it necessary for, for young people to just sort of go for it in order to achieve things at, at a high level? You know what I mean? Like, I, I don't know, like for, for both of us, probably our most, cutting edge physical achievements are maybe behind us you know hard to say like maybe i'll do some more stuff maybe you will too but you know but like you know in a way we're both old guys just like ranting about risk in our in our, in our comfortable office you know it's like is this just the natural order they're like oh we just slowly like lose the fire a little bit and like or i mean you know we both have families now and we're both like we want to live and and, and like hang with our families so obviously we're going to rein in a little bit more I, I don't know. I mean, what, what do you think about all that? Because it's like, it's just so, it's it's almost such a common like, oh, and now I'm a little older and I have a family, you know, I think about risk so much more. But the thing is like, I don't know if I would have done all the the things that I'm proud of doing if I had this exact perspective on risk 15 years ago. I think you said that really well. Roll tape on that and throw it up, yeah. throw it up in the show. But I think it's... I, I think that's true. You know, the it, as you get older, whether you become closer to reality or more conservative or, or whatever in your decision making, I think it's inevitable that as you understand the mountains and you see more, you you you'd be crazy not to go. Well, wow, that's this is really serious. Whether you're you know, but on the other hand, it, it, if you're young and that's the way your brain works, and I, I think that's part of this, I'm becoming more accepting of you know, we're not normal. Like you and I and, and all the climbers out there, we're not normal. Like we like going into this environment that is high hazard. And especially when we're younger, we're less concerned about that hazard. And that's how our brains work. And, you know, I, you've given talks to like rooms full of people whose brains don't work that way. They're like, they don't need that. They're pretty happy going to work and like barbecuing on the weekends and restoring that cool car in their garage. They got something cool going on, every one of them, I guarantee that. But they don't need that experience of, wow, I'm really out there and I'm committing everything and I'm going for it in this way. You know, climbers and so on, we're kind of abnormal that way. And as long as we're operating with a reasonable understanding of the hazards, then if one of us gets killed, I don't think it's a tragedy. It certainly is to the family and it, and it sucks. It just sucks. But it is an, it is an expected outcome. You, you, you play in high hazard environments, the environment's going to win some of the time. So as we get older, we, we start to really believe that. At least I have. I've been like, okay, I recognized it when I was younger, but I basically don't go alpine climbing anymore because like every fourth time I, I guide, I have a rock go by or something. And I'm like, I don't like this place. <laughs> I'm going over it, man. I don't, I don't, I don't have the tolerance for it. I've, I've stuffed people into bags and, and worked on shitty trauma and, and you do that. And, and the world doesn't look the same anymore as it sounds like you're also starting to figure out. Yeah. But yeah, but then you're like, oh, is this just like, is this what it's called to lose your edge? You know? Well, I don't think it, yeah, it's an interesting perspective. I think when you're young, you have an edge because it hasn't hit any rocks yet. And and so it's very sharp and you're like, oh, I'm good to go. I can just swing with wanton enthusiasm at everything. And, and my sword is sharp and usually it works out. And as, you're, as you hit some rocks and your blade, yeah, your edge does get duller, but you also probably have better odds of surviving. And now, for example, you've got a kid, I've got kids. Like it's pretty great to be around for them. And when people check out early, and a lot of people do, 
that's the worst part of this is not that the person's gone, but you look and there's like, you know, the three-year-old, where's dad, where's mom? That is, that is, that is really heavy and hard to, to handle. Yeah, you, you mentioned uh, playing a game with your kids to teach them to evaluate risk. What, uh, what do you do with your kids? What, what should I be doing with a uh, little baby June in a few years? <laughs> Well, I bet Jude's got the fire like you do. And so there's, you know, she's going to be like, and, and yeah, my kids are like a lot like me. They're fired up and they get out there in the world. They're like, ha ha, let's go play with the dangerous thing. And and right away, I figured out that we were going to have to have some kind of risk management program for this. Like, and I can't watch them all the time. And especially as they get older, I'll watch them less and less. So um, a whole bunch of experiences, but my kids and I developed this program. There's three hazard levels. So we'll be out there like hiking along in the mountains, you know, it'll be pretty cash. And, um, you know, I'll ask them like, you know, Rose, what hazard level are we at? And she'll look at me and be like, dad, this is bumps and bruises. We got this. This is chill. And I'll be like, do we need to do anything about this? And she'll be like, no, you know, just watch out. Don't, don't fall on my face. You know, maybe don't run on the sketchier parts. And then we'll be in like some more complicated environment where it's, uh, you know, maybe we're hiking along a trail with like a big drop off on the side and it's raining. And um, I'll be like, all right, Rose, you know, what, what level of hazard are we at now? And she'll be like, dad, this is hospital terrain. This is serious. And to manage this, um, I'm going to hold your hand and I'm going to walk on the inside of the trail and I'm not going to sprint down the trail and I'm just going to slow everything down. And they do this. And then we'll be in some super high hazard environment like Manhattan, you know, at like 930 Monday morning and it's chaos. And I'll have them by the hands and I'll be like, you know, what hazard level are we at? And they'll be like, death, dad, death, you know, and and they understand that if they run into that stream of traffic, they're going to get killed. And what are we going to do about that? Well, I'm going to hold your hand and we're going to watch the lights. We're going to follow these like New Yorkers. They're, they're pretty wacko, but you know, they seem to know how to navigate this. So we're going to follow local tradition and we're going to get through it. But then we get to like a playground, right? And, And my kids are, there is no fear. I'm like, what do we need to worry about? And they're like falling on our heads from the top of the monkey bars. We got this. And they attack. And you could say that it's negative to teach them about risk, but I'm not trying to freak them out. I'm trying to give them tools so that when they get to that playground, they are stoked and they know what the obstacles are and they can focus on a path and go forth and, you know, go after it. And it, that's, that's what it is. But I just want, you're going to just appreciate this as a parent. So the other day I'm in the kitchen, like making lunch, you got all these little kids in there in this super sketchy tree house I built in the backyard, right? Things like 10 feet off the ground. It's got no railings because I never got around to that. And they're arguing six or seven of these little kids are in there arguing about what's going to happen if they fall out. Is it going to be like bumps and bruises, hospital or death? And, and my daughter's like, well, if you landed exactly on your head, you could break your neck and you might dive. So let's, you know, we're not going to hang over the edges or we'll at least hold in their art. And I was, it didn't really matter. The main thing was that they had a concept that they're in a hazardous position and we're coming up with tactics to manage it. And I, and I was super stoked. I was like, my job is done here. <laughs> so that's, that's the long story to your question. But as that's climbers, a- we do the same thing. I'm I'm for sure going to save that. I'm going to tell my wife as soon as we're done chatting today because I'm like, we're definitely using that. But so what, uh, how old were your kids when you started teaching them about risk and evaluating risk? They were, they were pretty young, probably three and seven. Yeah. Hmm. And, and, and I think they were subconsciously picking up on that earlier, you know, but that, that's when it became a little more formalized. And I, and I watched, you know, my, my daughter, we went multi-pitch, Climbing the other day, she led the pitch and she, she brings me up and it's like, it's higher hazardous, higher hazard, right? We're entering into multi-pitch climbing now. The consequences are automatically more severe, but her mind is on fire. You know, she brings me up. She's like, she's leading dad up the climb, you know, and it's awesome. And she's 14 and I'm terrified because this is a high consequence environment, but this is how her brain works. And she knows that it's a potential death situation. She's not operating under the idea that this is like safe. And she's like checking things twice. She's fully ADD like me, but she's like, her beaners are perfectly organized and locked down and everything's tight. And I'm like, I could see she's getting something really beautiful out of it. And, you know, it's it's worth it. But at the same time, it's it's high hazard. And, and I don't think the argument will ever be finished in my mind about whether or not it's worth it. Because that's what this boils down to. Is it worth it to give her that experience? Is it worth it to climb Niagara Falls or Solo Well Cap? And if your answer is yes, then then it is. But to an outsider, maybe it's not. And that's okay. To the young guy, it is. Maybe to the old 
Alex and Will, it's not. And, and that's okay too. Was there a specific moment that inspired you to teach your kids about risk? I mean, when you said at three and seven, was there some event that, that precipitated you, you know, like now it's time to teach my kids about this? Or was it just sort of a natural evolution of, of the way you evaluate risk? Well, I'm always thinking about consequences, right? And and Marie, my, my older kid, was going across this log and it wasn't a deep river, but it was like it's a pretty real piece of water, you know, with some force to it. <laughs> And and she's she goes out across this log because she's she's feral. She's a bit like me. She's like, ha, cross the log, you know. <laughs> and and I'm looking at it. I'm going, oh, she falls in on the upside upstream side. I can probably still get her, you know. Even if she pins in the branches under the water, I can probably yank her out. It's not that deep. It's a couple feet deep at most. But it's high, you know. And I don't think she's thinking about this. So I just asked her. I was like, hey, if if you fall in on the upstream side, what do you think is going to happen? And and that's your basic risk management question. You know, what's going on here? And, and she's like, wow, I could like get pinned up against this tree by the current. And I was like, okay, is there anything you can do about that? And she's like, well, I can stay on the downstream side of this log. And if I am going to fall in, I'm going to like do everything I can to go in on the downstream side. And um, I'm going to hang on to the sticks. You know, some, it, she, she broke it all down. And, and that was the first time we talked about it in a more formal sense. It's like, what can go wrong? What are we going to do about it? Is it worth it? And those are three great questions to ask. Anytime we're all doing anything that's got hazard, whether it's like making the decision to pull the goalie and have a kid or solo well cap. It's like, you know, yeah, you got outcomes. This is more dangerous. Hey. Oh my God, geez. Yeah. yeah. Well, like well, childbirth geez, is please. super high hazard, right? Like, you know, if, 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 you know, it's, it's kind of crazy, you know, the mortality rate is still not in, insignificant. Yeah. I don't know if you heard, but we actually had a pretty dramatic birth too, or where, uh, our, our daughter came out not breathing and we spent Oof. a week in the hospital. It was all like pretty, pretty intense. But yeah. yeah. So it, it was exactly that where it's like, you know, you're sort of like, oh, we're having a kid that should be chill. And then you're like, it's, it's really not that chill. You know, like life can really, uh, you know, take you by surprise sometimes. Like, yeah. I'm, I'm, first of all, I'm super glad that, uh, that, that worked out well for you. And yeah, all, all worked out fine, but it was very dramatic for the, uh, for, for the week in the hospital. And we were uh, like, whoa. I, but you so got something crazy. really beautiful out of it. And I think that's what we get out of taking good risks. Like you took a risk. You're having a kid. It's going to have an impact on your life. It can be really, you know, it's not a sure thing. Like it's it's full on, but it's also massively beautiful. Now you've got this wonderful kid and, you know, your, your life will never be the same again. And I think any big project in life has both those elements. It's like, is it worth it or not? And And, you know, if you make a reasonably informed decision about it, while realizing your shortcomings and, and being realistic about it, then then I think it is. But if you haven't done that diligence, then then it's going to be a little bit harder to justify difficult outcomes.